Hello, I'm Don Hall, and I'm going to show you in this video how I throw these large platters on my potter's wheel. All right, a couple of words about my setup here. Uh, notice my water bucket, I have a towel attached to it, so it just hits on the on the edge of the bat so that when it gets water it'll get absorbed in here rather than spraying all over the front of me. Uh, and the bat itself, notice it's an extra large bat. I bought this bat pre-made but I've also made them by myself out of a piece of masonite and it's I can throw an even larger plate on this bat. Problem is I can only get as big as my kiln. <laughs> Uh, so here's my bat, store-bought bat. Notice that I've made circles on it by spinning the wheel, putting the pencil down, making a line. I do that so as I go out, I can see if I'm still round or not. Also, there's a line that goes across the bat through where the pin holes go that attach it to the to my potter's wheel and I use that because once I get the clay out farther I can't see those anymore and it gets hard to line up to put it back on the back so I'm going to be turning this upside down and, uh, a couple of times. Now a word about the clay. This is a lump of uh, stoneware clay. I'm going to throw it on the wheel here and it's very hard. It's very dried out. It's really too hard to throw on a uh, to throw a large a vessel out of because I just don't have enough strength to to get it centered correctly but it works perfectly fine for this kind of an operation so what I do is I get the wheel spinning and I want to punch this down and I'll go around and around and punch it down and I can get my handy rolling pin to do the same work I beat it down, let it spin, flatten it out. Notice I didn't have to push it all in and make it into a cone and then push it back down. I'm just starting with a dried out lump of clay right smack in the middle of my wheel and I'm gonna beat it down now. All right, I got it to flatten it out a little bit. I'm gonna add some water now and I'm gonna see if I can push it out a little bit further. Start in the middle, push down, and gradually, very slowly push away from myself. And remember, the outside of the wheel spins a lot faster than the inside of the wheel. So it's a dynamic you have to get used to. I'm using this hand to kind of keep it straight on the outside, and then I push out towards the outside edge. This usually takes quite a few, maybe four, five, six, even as many as eight or nine compressions as I'm pushing down and pushing out. Now, this is about a good time to check to see how far out around it got. So simply with a needle tool, I'll trim off the edge so that I'll have a, a more round plate when I get to the end. Let's push it out some more. Now, the thickness is important. You want it thick enough so that you can carve a foot in the bottom, but you don't want to make an overly thin, thick platter that's too heavy. Sometimes I will get too ambitious by pressing here and I'll make the plate too thin. In that case, 
what I do is I add a foot to the bottom once it's leather hard. All right, let's see here how we can we can smooth this out a little bit. I'm pulling it towards me. I have to slow it down a little bit when I get to the outside because that outside of the wheel spins so fast. There, it's not too bad. Give it one more final push. I've discovered an air bubble right here. So I'm gonna give it a little pop. I poke it with my needle tool, get that little bubble, get some of the air out of there. Uh, that's not too bad. I'll give it one more trim. I'm going to flatten it out. All right. Let's see if we can flatten this out a little bit. I have a, just a, pla a flat piece of wood here that I'm going to compress and pull towards the outside. That's not too bad. Now I'm going to just give a little lip around the outside edge. Turn it down a little bit, it's still going a little fast. With my index finger, I'm just going to push underneath to lift up, make a little lip around the outside of the plate. Give it a little pull up. Now, I would probably let this sit here for maybe 10, 15 minutes. Let it, just let it get sort of rest a bit. And the next most important thing I need to do is cut it off. One of the problems people have making plates is they leave them and they don't cut them off right away and what happens they crack the outside edge dries too fast the inside edge is still wet it cracks so if you cut it off now it uh, has a tendency to alleviate that problem and it'll, it won't crack on you like I say normally I would wait a few minutes but for the demo I'll just go ahead and cut it off now now, when you do this, you want to make sure that you are pressing down on the wheel head really hard and you pull this real tight straight. If you let it get too loose, it'll, it'll won't cut the bottom evenly. All right, let's see if we can cut it off here. This clay is so hard. All right, that cut off fairly nice. All right, now we're gonna let this dry for several hours and flip it over and trim the bottom. I'll show you how to do that now. So this plate is dried out enough now to flip it over, but I can't just flip it over the way it is because this, the bottom of it would sink in and it would be warped. So what I've, what I do is I have a whole lot of these circles that I've cut out of, of uh, 
some foam board and I put those inside and now I can flip it over and it'll stay flat on the bottom, allow me to trim it, do whatever I need to do on the other side. Okay, here's the plate, it's nice and dry. I'm putting some of my cardboard cutouts in there to keep the bottom nice and level. Now I'm gonna flip it over. There we go, it's nice and protected now and uh, ready to trim a little bit. I just like to put a just a little bit of clay around the edge to kind of hold it in place. When I trim a foot I, on these big platters, I, I like to make more than one foot. If you just put one on the outside edge like I'm doing here, then it uh, tends it to sink in the middle. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll put a couple of feet in on the bottom just to raise it up off the table a little bit. Even when I make these as decorative plates that aren't meant for food, I still do this so that they look finished on the bottom, even if they're meant to be hung on the wall. I still do this part of it. Then I leave one little bit in the very middle so the middle will, won't sink down. But that's basically it. That's basically how I throw a platter, a large platter. And uh, of course, I'll go ahead and finish this off neater, but you get the idea. All right, so that's how I throw a platter. I'll leave it here and uh, let it dry out. Just sign my name on here, Don Hall, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got something out of it. Love to hear any comments. Please subscribe to our channel.